For more than a quarter century, two words have haunted the city of Buffalo. Those two words? Wide right. Within wide right lies untold amounts of collective trauma. And any utterance of that dreadful phrase is liable to reduce a Bills fan to tears, the fetal position, or fisticuffs. Eventually, Al Michaels' description of Scott Norwood's errant field goal attempt in the dying moments of Super Bowl 25 became synonymous with the game itself, a gut-wrenching loss by the powerhouse Bills in their first ever trip to the big dance. And as fate would have it, that was just the beginning of Buffalo's nightmare. That missed field goal kicked off one of the most famous stretches of unrealized potential in pro sports history, and an almost unfathomable parade of misery for the Bills. Following Norwood's miss, the Bills eventually secured their uniquely dubious place in the annals of NFL history by losing each of the next three Super Bowls, cementing Buffalo as the city of shattered dreams. Once one of the great franchises of the American Football League, the Bills' migration to the NFL was a humbling one. After joining the league in 1970 as part of the seminal AFL-NFL merger, the Bills stumbled along as an afterthought for the better part of two decades, winning only one division title and making the playoffs just three times in their first 18 seasons. By the late 1980s, however, their fortunes finally started to turn as a bevy of highly touted youngsters came into their own. Specifically, quarterback Jim Kelly, running back Thurman Thomas, and wide receiver Andre Reid. That triumvirate, under the leadership of Marv Levy, transformed the Bills' offense into a juggernaut and ultimately turned the once irrelevant franchise into a genuine powerhouse. In 1988, their first season playing together, the Bills added five wins to their previous year's total, finishing 12-4 to capture the second division title in franchise history and snap a seven-year playoff drought. By 1990, the Bills boasted the best offense in the NFL. Kelly earned his third career Pro Bowl nomination that year and finished fifth in MVP voting, while Reed earned a third straight Pro Bowl nod himself. As for Thomas, he was named first team All-Pro after leading the league in yards from scrimmage for a second season in a row. Coupled with a staunch defense anchored by Defensive Player of the Year and eventual all-time sack leader Bruce Smith, the Bills led the NFL in point differential for the first time ever and waltzed into the playoffs with a franchise record 13 wins. After coming up short in the playoffs in 88 and 89, and after struggling for so long to even be part of the postseason picture, finally it seemed, the Bills were primed to get to the promised land. And after dispensing Dan Marino's Dolphins and demolishing the LA Raiders to earn a spot in Super Bowl 25, the only thing standing between them and football immortality was the New York Giants who ostensibly did the Bills a favor in knocking off the mighty San Francisco 49ers in the NFC Championship game and denying them a chance at an unprecedented three-peat. That said, the Giants were no pushovers. A well-established NFC powerhouse, the Giants came into Super Bowl 25 looking for their second championship in a five-year span and boasting the best defense in the NFL, led by future Hall of Famer Lawrence Taylor. The matchup oozed with storylines. The NFL's most prolific offense squaring off against its stingiest defense? A distinguished, long-tenured NFL franchise taking on one of its newer, decidedly undistinguished clubs? The battle for the state of New York. Still, the bottom line was that the Bills took the field at Tampa Stadium as heavy seven-point favorites, having not only put up a whopping 95 points in their first two playoff games, but also having previously defeated the Giants in their lone regular season matchup. That game was a tightly contested nail-biter, though, and the Super Bowl unfolded in similar fashion. Resolved to keep the ball out of Kelly's hands, the Giants' focus from the opening kickoff was controlling the clock, and they executed their game plan to a tee. New York's offense hogged the ball from the get-go, eating up the clock with run-heavy drives, while their defense stymied the few chances Buffalo's offense did get. After 15 minutes of play, Buffalo had generated just three points by way of a 23-yard chip shot field goal from Pro Bowl kicker Scott Norwood. That kick, incidentally, made Norwood 5 of 6 for the postseason. And shortly thereafter, Kelly and the Bills' offense broke through, with Buffalo taking a 10-3 lead early in the second, a lead they soon extended to 12-3 thanks to a safety from Smith. But the Giants hung tough and stuck to their game plan, trimming their deficit back to two points just before halftime, then surging ahead 17-12 on the first possession of the second half, 
another interminable drive that lasted more than nine minutes. From there, the lead changed hands twice more, with the Bills storming out in front early in the fourth quarter on an epic touchdown run by Thomas, only to see the Giants eventually claw back to take a 20-19 advantage. And with just over two minutes remaining, the Giants still held that one-point edge as Buffalo's star-studded offense ready for a season-defining drive from their own 10-yard line. And drive they did. The Bills marched from just outside their own end zone deep into Giants territory, picking up 61 yards in the span of eight plays, including two monster runs from Thomas. It was his second scamper, in fact, that brought the Bills to New York's 29-yard line, where Kelly quickly spiked the ball to stop the clock with eight seconds remaining. Eight seconds. Not enough time to run another play before sending in the kicking team. So, with a 47-yard field goal standing between Buffalo and a long-awaited first Super Bowl, it was all coming down to Norwood, the Bills' lifer only two years removed from being named First Team All-Pro. As it happens, Norwood's longest field goal during the regular season sailed 48 yards. His career long, meanwhile, was 49 yards. And of his 10 field goal attempts between 40 and 49 yards that season, Norwood converted six of them. So this one, the one that would define him, 47 yards from the right hash, was technically within his range. But Norwood had never converted a field goal of that length on grass, having done the majority of his kicking on the artificial turf at Rich Stadium. In fact, to that point in his career, Norwood was only 8 for 17 on grass, with most of those converted field goals coming from short range. Norwood, in other words, needed to make the kick of his life. Either way though, he was now destined to become part of Buffalo lore, either as one of the greatest sports heroes in the city's history, or as one of its most enduring tragic figures. That was for the kicking gods to decide. Right. With that iconic miss, the Bills' championship dreams were shattered and the Giants escaped with a 2019 victory in what remains the closest Super Bowl ever played. The kick incidentally had more than enough leg on it, but Norwood wondered aloud in his post-game interview if his emphasis on distance had come at the expense of some much needed draw. In any event, Norwood became the embodiment of Buffalo's defeat, while that missed field goal with its impossibly high stakes became a cultural touchstone itself. In fact, it was Norwood's miss that partially inspired the plot of Jim Carrey's iconic 1994 comedy, Ace Venture, A Pet Detective, where the primary antagonist is a former NFL kicker whose missed field goal in the dying seconds of the Super Bowl turns him insane. Your little footballs. <laughs> Laces out. Ultimately though, as agonizing and monumental as that loss was for Buffalo, Wide Right was merely the first chapter of one of the most gut-wrenching stretches in pro sports history. In each of the next three seasons, the high-scoring Bills conquered the AFC and made it back to the Super Bowl, becoming the first team ever to make four consecutive Super Bowls. However, they also earned the dubious distinction of being the first and likely only team ever to lose four consecutive Super Bowls, a breathtaking string of defeats that established the Bills as the definitive manifestation of sports futility. And unlike their showdown with the Giants, the Bills got absolutely slaughtered in each of their last three trips to the Super Bowl. In Super Bowl 26 against Washington, the Bills got shut out in the first half, found themselves trailing by 24 points in the third quarter, and ultimately lost by two touchdowns. The following year, the Bills stumbled through an even more humiliating effort against the dynastic Dallas Cowboys, getting picked apart by Troy Aikman and Michael Irvin in a 52-17 shellacking. And in their record-breaking fourth consecutive Super Bowl appearance, the Bills got bullied by the Cowboys again, with Emmitt Smith running roughshod over Buffalo in a 30-13 victory. And in the three decades since, the Bills have done nothing to dispel their reputation as perpetual losers. Since that fourth straight Super Bowl loss, the Bills have yet to make it back to the big dance, and they spent much of the ensuing quarter century plus fumbling around in the AFC East basement. And until they finally win the last game of the season, the Bills will continue to be defined by failure, an identity that can be traced back to that one fateful kick that sailed wide right. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button.